Um, yeah, so welcome ladies. Nice little small group today. Um, my name's Meredith from the Food Bank, new nutrition coordinator. Um, and I'm Christina. I don't know if I formally said my oh, name. Nice. <laughs> <It's a little laughs> introduction. Yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, would you ladies like to introduce yourselves? I'm Nancy. Yeah. I'm Joan. Yeah. I'm Cynthia. Cynthia. Nancy, yeah. Joan, Cynthia. Cynthia. All right. Um, yeah, so thank you both, thank you all for coming down to our little uh, workshop today. Um, our big topic for today is we want to talk about healthy eating, especially with the holidays here. Um, I don't know about you, but I've definitely been indulging a little <laughs> too much <laughs> so far, and Christmas is still coming up. Um, so usually whenever we do a workshop, we always touch base on my plate nutrition guidelines, which you may or may not have heard of before. Um, but we're going to go over that. We also talk about reading nutrition facts labels, um, which again, you probably already know about that, but they've actually made a new label mm -hmm. that will kind of go over some of the changes that have happened there and some things to look out for. In particular, we talk about sugar and sodium and those foods. Um, we're also going to talk about a little bit of mindful eating, uh, weight maintenance, especially right now with all the holiday foods and some strategies for just having good healthy diets and trying to have some healthy habits um so yeah have you seen this picture before yeah, oh, no. similar, or the old food yeah. pyramid or yeah. 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 yeah 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 this is the old usda guidelines created the pyramid but how confusing is this <laughs> like what is that <laughs> what is this purple slice and how much can i have of it right um, so now they created these. Oh, those are cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, oh, can I eat on this? And we're like, I don't know if you want to. We've had these for like three years now. A lot of hands. Um, but so this is kind of an easier way to go around and look down at your plate and see. If you want to pass this up. Um, kind of see what your plates are made out. And do you also notice the size of the plate? It seems a lot smaller especially than like restaurant size plates oh my god so it's based off of a 10 inch plate where if you go to any sort of restaurant or kind of sit down eating they're going to be 12 to 14 inch plates with those large portion sizes so it's also important to notice that our portion sizes are based off of a 10 inch plate um, and kind of following those guidelines of how it's divided just to make sure that you get all the nutrients in your diet kind of everything you need exactly um, and one thing that we really love about this new food, um, you know, diagram is that it's a plate, you know, I'm, I'm sure most people, if not everyone will eat off of a plate. So it's very familiar to everyone. And mm. therefore it's a lot easier to kind of visualize, you know, oh, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I got a lot of mashed potatoes here. So I should probably get some extra green beans on there just to try to balance <laughs> it a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is my plate. Um, and as you see on my plate, half of that plate, two of those sections are vegetables wow. and fruits. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the fruits and veggies, we always say whatever you're having, try to make at least half of your plate fruits and vegetables. Um, and especially right now with us going into winter time, it could be difficult to get those fresh fruits and veggies that a lot of people really are looking for. So we always encourage people, it doesn't have to be fresh. Fresh is always nice, but if you can't get that, experiment with frozen, canned fruits and vegetables as well. Um, frozen, what's really nice about that is you're still getting all of the nutrients in there because what they do is they take the fresh stuff and then they put it into the freezer. So you're not losing any nutritional value with the frozen stuff. Hmm. Um, canned fruits and veggies as well are great. You just want to be careful because since it's canned, they have to preserve it. There could be a lot of extra sodium in there or a lot of sugar, depending on what the food item is. Um, How about the nutrition in canned? Does that, that change or is that okay? It's okay. You know, I think the thing with canned is that because it's so like preserved, a lot of times, like if you get like canned fruits, for example, let's say canned pears, yeah. they don't have like the skin on them where you do get a lot of other nutrients in there and a lot of fiber. So you might be a little low in that department. Um, but other than that, really, like you are getting a good amount of nutrition in the canned fruits and veggies as well. You just 
kind of depends on it depends on the item I so the vitamin level stays the same oh yeah okay. yeah. Right. Know yeah yeah um one thing that we always recommend though with those canned ones is make sure that you rinse them before you use them um or drain them just because i know like for me a lot of times i make a lot of chili at home and so i'll do like canned black beans canned tomatoes put it all in but like especially beans depending on like if you get the regular beans or the low sodium ones but they still have that like juicy salty preservative mm -hmm. mixture that if you just drain it rinse it with some water you're reducing a lot of that added sodium so it's going to be a lot better for you um and also too with the frozen fruits and veggies you want to be careful with those because sometimes have you seen like the frozen broccoli with like the cheese sauce <laughs> of course. It tastes so good. Anything with cheese. Um, but again, that's one of those things where if you can, try to get the ones that don't have those sauces or sometimes the fruits, they add sugar to it, like mm. the strawberries and it makes them nice and sweet. Um, but try to get them just plain fruits and veggies that are frozen. Um, anything you want to add with that? Oh, yeah, so with the... The frozen, you just want to make sure it just says whatever's in the package. So strawberries, broccoli, okay. so that way you know it's the only ingredient. Yeah. Yeah. It exactly. kind of covers all the bases. You know, there's nothing extra added. Because they'll try to add something in there to increase the taste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to make you coming back for more, but oh, you want to make sure it's just the vegetable or fruit. Do you ladies have any questions with that? No. Yeah. I have about vitamins, and so that's good. But yeah. It's so good that you're, that you're, um, looking into that um and i feel like that's like a lot of times a lot of people have that misconception that oh it's in a can or it's right. frozen it's not as good right. as the fresh but that's that's not true okay. at all you know it's just a little bit of a different form um and so you know we as nutritionists we're always talking about fruits and veggies and trying to get people to really increase their intake of those um and so one thing, especially now with the holidays, if you're going to go visit someone and you're like, hmm, what am I going to bring to the party? Try to bring something that could be a little on the healthier side. Maybe like a nice fruit salad, maybe cut up some fresh veggies and make a nice little like dip or something, which actually in our cookbook, there's a really good, is it French onion dip that we did? And it's like pretty healthy, has yogurt in it instead of all the sour cream. Um, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of different options you can use to try to just sneak a little more into your, your diet. Um, how many of you, what time is it now? So I guess we already had lunch, but how many of you have had at least one serving of fruit today? Okay. Yeah. What about the vegetables, at least one serving? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. All right. That's better than me. I haven't had them either. <laughs> Uh, but see, like sometimes it's hard though, you know. I feel like, I mean, I don't know. For lunch today, I had a turkey and cheese sandwich. I didn't put any lettuce in there, so I'm like, oh, this is kind of a boring sandwich. But there's different ways where you can add those extra veggies in. When you drink like VH, is that that kind of? I mean, they say they're fruits and vegetables, but are they really? Yeah. So VH juice, it is fruits and veggies in there. You want to be careful with those. A lot of times, like you, you got to look at the label because a lot of times, especially like the the veggie juice, they add a lot of salt into it, especially that like tomato juice. Um, so if I get the low salt, so that it tastes different, but it's yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing with those juices, though, and you know, the fruit and veggie juices, they're totally fine, but because it's in a juice form, you're not getting like all that fiber that you normally would get with the whole fruit or vegetable okay. um which again i mean it's totally fine but still try not to just have v8 juice be your only serving of vegetables you know yeah we usually recommend to keep like, it to like one serving so like eight ounces a day because you'll still get the full fruits and vegetables benefit it's just like she said that fiber that helps you digest the yeah. sugar and the sodium in it so you just want to make sure you keep it to one serving and then switch it up and add like whole fruits and whole vegetables in. It shouldn't affect like your blood sugar or anything. 
as long as you're just not chugging a whole gallon of the <laughs> the V8. <VA. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but it still gets you those vitamins, those minerals, okay. the different nutrients in it. So you still get a good serving of those in there. Exactly. That's a really good question. I'm so yeah. glad you asked that. Yeah. Um. Any other questions with that? Is there anything else on your mind with that fruit and veggie category there? <coughs> Generally speaking, isn't fresh uh, whole fruit better than fruit juice? Yes. 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 And we always say, you know, whole fruits and vegetables are the best option. And again, it's because of like, one, you're getting all the nutrients, but it's that fiber, that structure of the fruits and veggies that you don't get in the juice. Mm -hmm. So you got to get it in those whole forms. Um, you know, and I know like a lot of people, and I'm one of them um eating fruits and veggies all the time is it can be kind of hard you just may not really be in the mood to like have a salad right um and so i always say like if you're you know if you're struggling with that go ahead add your veggies to like a smoothie if you want you know add those fruit juices or even if you make your own like homemade juices totally fine because at least you're still getting those nutrients but yeah. still try to get some extra structure in there um yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Um, and yeah, with those holiday flatters, don't be afraid to have some fun with them. Definitely makes them look a lot, a lot more appealing. So just not too much fun. People don't want to eat it because it's too cute. <laughs> I was going to say, like, this turkey's way too cute. I don't know if I could eat that. I would not be the first person to take a banana away, trust me. Right. Like, it's too cute to have I know, it's so pretty. It's so colorful. Um, and so we brought today for you ladies to try um, a sample of this apple cabbage coleslaw, which the recipe is in the book. Um, we did switch it up a little bit. So it's made with Greek yogurt in the dressing instead of um, mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Yeah. So you um, still get that same consistency just with little healthier fats and some protein from that Greek yogurt. And protein's really good at filling you up. So instead of mayonnaise, you just Greek yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. We just use like the same amount of um, yogurt in that recipe. So I think it calls for like a cup of mayonnaise. We just used a cup of yogurt. And once you like blend it up and you mix it with the vinegar, the apple cider vinegar and the honey, it's like the same consistency that you would get with the mayonnaise. Um, yeah. So it's a really good substitute for um, sour cream or mayonnaise and any sort of dip or any recipe that calls for sour cream or mayonnaise, you can kind of swap it out for plain um, yogurt, from Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said that for the um, onion dip, you could do that? Yep. Really? Yep. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so that's what we made recently. So you just cook down all those onions. It's so good. And enjoy the smell of your kitchen for hours. Oh <laughs> so you cook down all the onions, then you mix in with a little low-fat cream cheese and some Greek yogurt, um, add some spices and garlic. And yeah, then you use veggies or little pita chips, and it makes a really good French onion dip. Oh yeah, like you don't even have to. You know how um, you can get like the French onion dip packets at the grocery store? Yeah. This tastes way better than that. Oh, <laughs> and I, I kid you not, so Christina was making it, and everyone in the office kept walking by the kitchen being like, what's that? What are you guys cooking? What are you guys cooking? Yeah. All those nice caramelized onions in there. Yeah, so that's another good recipe to bring with some cut up veggies. Yeah, definitely. Those. Definitely a crowd pleaser. Um, and so the next food group that you that you see on your my place there is protein. And when we say protein, what food usually comes to mind? Meat. Beef. Beef. Yeah. Beef. <laughs> <laughs> And those are all great proteins. But there's also other sources of protein too that doesn't have to be meat. Um, you know, for example, eggs are fabulous, fish, beans. Beans are becoming a really popular protein source for a lot of people. Um, and also nuts and nut butters as well. Um, you know, and proteins are great. You really need them for all of your muscle building. Um, they have a whole bunch of other nutrients in them, a lot of B vitamins as well. Um, Greek yogurt too, another nice protein mm. source. Um, so you can really find it in a lot of different food groups. Um, one thing that we always um, encourage people as well is when you do have your proteins, be careful with those 
portion sizes as well. I know with me, if you put like a plate of wings in front of me, that's <laughs> gone <laughs> real quick. It's hard to say no. <laughs> it's so hard. You just have one. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Um, but like the average portion size for um, a piece of meat is about three ounces, which is about the size of a deck of cards, if you can kind of picture that in your brain. Um, nut butters, they're super good for you, but they're also high in calories, so you want to try to keep that portion size pretty small. Oh, wow. So, like peanut butter, they say a portion size is only one tablespoon, which well, that's my expression <laughs> too. <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's kind of um, I don't know, a, a little disheartening to think like, oh, one tablespoon, yeah. which is really just like the size of your thumb, yeah. you know. Um, cooked beans also, you know, super good for you. Um, they can be a little dense sometimes, but they say about half a cup is one serving for beans too. Um, next food group, dairy. Dairy, super duper important, especially as we start to get older, especially for us ladies, we really need that extra calcium and vitamin D. Um, and now that it's winter time too, it can be really hard to get enough vitamin D in your diet um, because we don't have enough sunlight <laughs> as evidence mm -hmm. today. Um, and vitamin D, they say, is the sunshine vitamin. Summertime comes, and if you're outside, you're getting so much vitamin D just by being out in the sun. Um, but so come wintertime, definitely try to up your intake of these foods just to make sure that you have enough vitamin D and calcium to keep your bones strong. Um, we always recommend try to stick to low-fat dairy, low-fat milk, skim milk, uh, low-fat yogurts as well. I know some people aren't really a fan of low-fat milk. I used to have a lot of clients that were like, oh, low-fat milk, that's water. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> which, you know, each person has their own taste. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to try to get about three servings of dairy each day. Um, and so when you break it down, let's say for breakfast this morning, you had a bowl of cereal. You're adding milk to your cereal. That's maybe like half a cup to a cup. Depends how you like it. Um, but that could be one serving there. Maybe for lunch, you know, you have some cheese in your sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, an ounce of cheese is about one serving, which is about like just one slice. <clears throat> um, and then maybe for dinner time, you know, again, you, like you have a glass of milk. Um, or if you're not really into dairy products themselves, you can get vitamin D and calcium from a whole bunch of other foods like your leafy green vegetables. Um, you know, especially things like spinach, kale, broccoli, those are packed with vitamin D. Um, some other sources too would be if you guys are into sardines, almonds, things like that. Not only do they have protein, but they have that vitamin D. Um, is anyone here like sensitive to milk products at all? Milk. I have cheese because milk sometimes I don't like. Okay. It's oh yeah, yeah. I totally hear you with that. Um, one option we always encourage people to try as well is if milk doesn't agree with you. Um, they do have orange juices out there that are fortified with extra vitamin D and calcium. Mm -hmm. um, and it says it right on the label. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually a good way to get that extra nutrition in. Or if you want to venture into dairy-free milk products, there's soy milk, um, almond milks, there's some other ones out there, but I think soy milk is the most comparable to the regular milk. Um, and then also tofu. Some people are like, what's tofu? So if you want to try it, I think it's great. Make a stir fry with it, but uh, if you're not into it, it does look a little interesting. It's all about the preparation. It is all about the like preparation. It's just fun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to like, <laughs> You have to dab it with a paper towel to yeah, try to get rid of the extra water. It's like cauliflower. Yeah. You want to drain all the moisture out, and then it makes it crispy. Yes. But, yeah. Do you have the, your information in here? Or, um, okay. Tofu scrambler is a good for breakfast. That's oh, a good yeah. alternative, too. Yeah, I just yeah. want, um, Pretty where do I put it? Turmeric, cumin, that sounds good. onion powder, and... Um, Mmm, something else with the C. Coriander, maybe? Mmm. Mm. Mix it up, scramble it up, and it looks yellow like scrambled eggs. But what I do is I put some salsa over the top. 
Mm. With a little bit of Parmigiana cheese. That's a really good idea. Pumpernickel bread on the side. Oh, oh you're oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds amazing. And it's, I'm not hungry if I eat that. I'm not hungry it's if I eat the tofu. There's tons of protein in tofu. Mm -hmm. And low calories and packed mm -hmm. with protein. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good alternative. It's just, like you said, when you get creative with the way you cook it, it's, it's, it's really, it responds really well to a lot of seasoning, a lot of spices. You really got to add some love into the tofu and then, <laughs> and then it'll finally start tasting pretty, pretty good. Like you said, you can fry it up, add it to stir fry, add some soy sauce. It really mm -hmm. seasons it up and kind of crisps it up. Oh yeah. So it can take away from some of that texture where it's a little, you can tell it's, it's tofu. Yeah. <laughs> but so it looks yeah. on the eat right. Yeah. This kind of summarizes everything we're talking about. We'll also send the PowerPoint to Violet right. after okay. this, and then just so she can um, send it to all of you. Okay. Any other questions at all with dairy stuff? Mm -hmm. All right. So next is my favorite: grains, carbs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you're talking about your pumpernickel, your pumpernickel bread, I'm like, yes, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know if you guys have really, um, you know, looked too much into like all the different breads that are out there, but if you go to the grocery store, there's like a zillion different types of bread you can get now, right? Um, we always encourage people, if you can, and you want to look at the package of the bread, um, but try to stick to whole grain bread, whole wheat bread, um, rye, things like that, because what happens is you guys know like Wonder Bread, wheat, br uh, the white bread, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. The white wheat. The white wheat. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. It tastes really good. The texture is so nice and soft. But what they do to make it that way is they take the wheat kernel right this is your your grain of wheat and they get rid of all the really good healthy parts the bran the outer part here the dark brown part hmm. they get rid of that they get rid of the inside the uh the germ or germ yeah. Of the end of, yeah the germ um and then they just leave it with all the white fluffy fatty stuff um, the endosperm, I'm like, it looks so crazy. I know, <laughs> this is a little, a little extreme here. Um, but they take out those layers of the grain and they leave it with just like that white fatty part to make the bread. By doing that, you're removing a lot of nutrients. You're taking out all the fiber that was once in that grain. Um, and what you're left with is a less nutritious form of that grain kernel they make it into a bread but without all that bran mm -hmm. it makes it very soft which is really nice but you're lacking a lot of the fiber the b vitamins that are in there um so although it tastes good if you can try to stick to that brownish the wheat bread um you know um just so that way you're you're making sure that you're getting all those nutrients in your bread. Yeah. So it's similar to the, the fruit juice conversation we had yeah. where white bread's good if you want that extra carb, but if you have too much of it, it's really gonna spike your blood sugar. So just like if you eat the whole fruit, you're basically getting the whole package. So you're getting that fiber, you're getting the vitamins, the minerals, and that really helps you digest that sugar. So fiber slows your stomach down when it's digesting, so it can slowly release that sugar. So you have more of like a sustained energy throughout the day where if you wake up and you have white bread by itself and it'll, you'll run through that energy by 9 30. so it's really important to have that sustained energy so you're not doing that sugar cycle and not craving more sugar to feed that energy level to really have that whole grain which really helps you just keeping fuller for longer <coughs> how many of you are Okay with wheat bread. Does anyone here pick that normally or yeah. whole grain bread? Wheat bread. Whole grain bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do all sorts of bread. Nice. Look, bread is bread. Keep <laughs> <laughs> their options open. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Not as much white though. Not as much white. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Oh, I do English muffins and those are mostly white. So. <laughs> Oh my it's gosh. all about balance. <laughs> uh, and you have to get the nooks and crannies. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I 
hear you on that. <laughs> um, and so, when you're in the store, yeah. this is where it gets tricky. So, what we have here is the ingredient label for just a bag of bread. Um, and the first ingredient that's listed, that's the ingredient that makes up the most amount of that food, the greatest amount. Um, and so with any sort of whole grain product, your breads, your English muffins, um, you want to make sure that the ingredient says, the first ingredient says whole grain, wheat flour, or whatever grain it is. Um, if it doesn't say whole grain as the first item, you want to be careful with that product. A lot of times it may say like enriched wheat flour, the next one which, mm. aha, right here, enriched enriched bleached flour, wheat flour, malted barley, blah, 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 um, which from the sound of it, enriched, like that's a nice mm. word. It sounds like it's very, you know, nutritious and good for you. But what happens with anything that's enriched, what they do is they take out that brand they take out that endosperm part or the germ the germ thank you um they take those out to make that bread product really nice but then they essentially fortify that bread and they put it back in to try to get those nutrients in it again but it's not going to be the same as it was before um yeah so you can see on the label so like whole grain and then enriched and they've kind of added some of the wheat bran back so they try and do some sort of, they remove all the chemical, the, the nutrients and slowly add them back just to make it super confusing. Right. <laughs> Instead of just right. doing the whole grain. Yeah. But, but so for this one, it, it would count as a whole grain because the majority of the product is a whole grain. So you're still getting all those benefits. You're still getting the fiber and the nutrients and the different minerals. Um, so this one would count as a whole grain. You can see that most breads, it's going to be a combination of of both just for texture preferences and just somehow down the line that became our uh, taste preference in the United States so the companies love to just mix it up and yeah. combine the different flours oh yeah and you know and I mean you know don't get us wrong if it's enriched you're still getting those nutrients but it's just it may not be everything that used to be in there um so do they take everything out like they strip it and then they put in kind of like you know fight it in Sort of yeah yeah so it'll be like yeah. supplementing it okay yeah like and you can kind of even see down here too where it says the simon hydrochloride vitamin b1 yeah. and vitamin d b2 um those are great vitamins to have yeah. but they're listing it because they added it back in mm -hmm. it's not like it was just already like in the whole brain yeah where all those naturally occur inside that germ oh. yeah so those vitamins and minerals are already naturally inside that little seed pocket in the middle um, so when that's removed, they have to kind of go in and add the supplement forms back okay. um, into the food. So it sounds kind of odd, huh? They're, they're <laughs> sounds counterintuitive, but... <laughs> right, exactly. It just sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it does. Um, you know, and so we've already talked about whole wheat as a whole grain product, mm -hmm. but there's other grain products, too. My favorite is popcorn. That's technically a whole grain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're getting the whole package. Oh, yeah. Be careful with the butter that you have <laughs> on there, but <laughs> go light. Um, but you can also do things like cornmeal, oats, oatmeal, um, brown rice, barley, things like that. Those are all fantastic. Um, anyway. I'm going to add something. Yeah. Here, you know, you're talking about grains, protein, mm -hmm. vegetables, fruits, dairy. doesn't say starch. Yes. Doesn't starch. say starch now. For for grain, uh, what do you? I mean, starch to me would be like potatoes, pasta, rice, variations mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that here. Or is that a vegetable? So is like a rice a vegetable? No. Uh, well, so that's the yeah. thing. So there are starches in like corn, potatoes, a lot of those root veggies have a lot of starch. Mm -hmm. But kind of like where we said the flour is a lot of combination. <laughs> that's what, when it comes to carbs, it's a mixture of everything. Fiber, the sugars, the starches. So starch is under a carbohydrate. Um, so that's why you still get some carbohydrates in a lot of the vegetables. It comes from that starch. So it's more of like a combination inside of wheat or the whole grains or inside the bread 
starch counts as a carbohydrate. So when you're like reading the nutrition label and it says total carbohydrates, dietary fiber, sugars, starch is kind of not listed here, but it would count towards those carbohydrates, those total carbs. Now I was just looking at a magazine, I guess, Taste of Home, and they had a quinoa breakfast. Ooh, the quinoa, they had grape tomatoes, they had um, avocado, they had some basil leaves, and they drop an egg on top of that, like a cooked egg. My question is, what is that quinoa? What? That's another grain. That's another grain. Yeah. 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 So it's like rice, the whole grain. Like a whole yeah. Grain. So kind of like rice, brown rice, oats is a grain, wheat germ. Is it healthier over. than like brown rice? What's in it? It's pretty, nutri nutrient wise, it's pretty yeah. much the same. It just counts as a whole grain, so it has the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. Oh, so it's complete then. If you're eating it's a complete, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's complete. Yep, it's a yeah. complete whole grain. And I so think that's like why. one of the other perks with the quinoa too is it does have a little bit more protein in it yeah. than the brown rice does. So it's kind of it's one of those like hot items now. Um, but it is definitely a grain. There's these huge bags of it in Costco. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, a, it's, it's people latch on to these little trends like the coconut oil, yeah. the quinoa. So it's one of those popular things going around now where it's yeah. Hopefully it's cheaper because the quinoa used to be very expensive but it is a great source yeah. like you said protein really good whole grain so you're getting all those nice carbs fills you up um and it's pretty low calorie too so yeah. who eats that i'm not really this western culture that we live in and now i think i want to say it's more mediterranean yeah or yeah oh, mediterranean. i would say mediterranean kind of um, like couscous yeah quinoa kind of that oh, thing i see yeah so it's healthy really because it's a whole grain yeah definitely healthy but it tends to be a little bit expensive I would think it's on the higher end yeah, yeah. where you can kind of get the same thing like she said from brown rice maybe a little bit more less protein but you still get that whole grain you still get all those benefits and the nutrients um, yes taste and texture I've yeah. tasted it I mean yeah. I've tasted it in different occasions yeah um like in summer salad mm. Salads, yeah. yeah, it's really good for like grain salads because it, it adds that extra protein, but then also like a different texture. But it's kind of like tofu, you really got to season it. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> it's not bringing much flavor to the table, so that is true. Um, and I think like it's attractive, I would say. It's like I think what's interesting about quinoa is like when you cook it and it kind of like spirals out a little bit, it kind of fluffs up. Mm -hmm. It just, I don't know, I think it adds like an interesting visual appeal. It does look a little odd, but it's, I don't know, it's different. I saw it cooked with apples for breakfast. Mm. Like, a oat, like, like an oatmeal presentation. <coughs> oh, that was kind of tasty because it had cinnamon and nutmeg. Wow, I've never heard of it in like a sweet kind of way. And then so you put just of... a little maple syrup. Mm -hmm. We'll have to test that out. Yeah. So I, I've only seen it in like savory, like you said, like salads or like a green mm -hmm. bowl. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it in like a sweet variation. No. Yeah. But I, I don't see why that wouldn't be good. I'll say it's comfortable. Like oatmeal? Yeah. yeah. We'll have to it's test that out. It's awfully filling because I had a phone gauge me once and I was full until supper time. Oh, that's right. I ate some of that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very yeah. filling. Because like we said, whole grains, that fiber is really filling and then with that extra added protein, it's just your stomach is slow to digest it. So it's really, really oh. filling. Yeah. I'm so glad that you brought that up too. That's like, like I said, it's one of those like, you know, newer hot items that a lot of people are really curious about. Um, and I would say if you want, definitely experiment with it. Um, it is pretty versatile. And like there's some other ones out there too. Like a lot of people are getting into like farro and mm. bulgur and things like that. Um, and again, similar to that, um, you can make it savory or you can make it sweet. Like one thing that I'll do is I'll make like a bulgur, like a just a pot of like bulgur cereal in the morning. And like I'll add like my berries to it, a little bit of maple syrup, but just try to sweeten it a little bit. And it's nice, it's almost like oatmeal. And barley. barley. When I used rainy and grandmother used to put barley in soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or she would make um, something that looked like a bonky, but it had some barley in it too. Ooh. Ooh, it's just like barley. Instead of rice on a plate to have barley. 
Yeah. 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 Just to mix it up, like texture wise yeah, and, and flavor. Yeah. 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 That's another thing with grains too is it's important to kind of switch it up. Because there are variations. They may be a little different in vitamin and mineral wise, but any kind of variety in our diet really helps. Yeah. Um, I always say if you see it at the store and you're, you're curious about it, try it out. It's a lot of fun. And then give us the feedback. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> um, any other questions with these grains? So when you actually, yes, if it's yeah. not the first ingredient, the whole grain, <clears throat> wheat flour, I've yeah. noticed that some breads don't have it as being first, and it looks kind of brownish bread, you know, it looks like white bread that they added coloring to. And they did. They did. Okay. They add a lot of caramel coloring to right. bread mm -hmm. and call it wheat. Yeah. So that's, that's why we say it's really important to check that label, because even all of the yeah. side will say, with added extra fiber, yeah. and it says like made with whole grain. Right. So they can advertise it, but then you'll read the label, and it's less than 50% of the product oh. is whole grain. Right. So you're paying this extra money yeah. for something whole wheat when it's not really giving you all the benefits of, of a whole grain. Okay. So even if the the whole even if they have little oatmeal grains on the outside mm -hmm. or there's seeds on the outside, you still want to check that label just to make sure. Because a lot of it is advertising mm -hmm. and kind of making it look flashy. Because like you said, there's so many options right. in the bread aisle now. That they have to do something to stand apart, so they, they try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they try oh, their yeah. best. Oh, yeah. So checking that first ingredient is really important. Really good question. Um, any other questions with that? I think there's one more example after this. Oh, yeah. A whole grain. Oh, just kidding. I would. What about raisin bread? Oh, there's one more. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's got raisins in it, but those are sugary, right? So, so dried fruit is, is a little trickier because, like you said, it's concentrated, so it has a lot of that yeah. the water, but it still has, like, the fiber from the outside. It's a little more concentrated sugar, so, like, the serving size might be a little smaller, but inside, like, a bread, it's, it's natural sugar from the raisin. So as long as you can check that label and make sure there's no extra added sugar to it, okay. that's what's important. Be careful. And sodium. Like, oh, yeah. Well, like, and sometimes, too, like, have you seen those loaves of bread, the cinnamon raisin bread, where it's, like, and you can see it on the slice of bread, and it's, like, that cinnamon swirl, yeah. and it looks so <laughs> nice. Petrus, Petrus, Petrus. 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 Yes. Oh, my God. I saw some at the store last night, and I was like, mm, I want it. So it's a good um, treat. It is definitely a nice treat. Nice toast in the morning with butter. Um... But I'm pretty sure that usually on those, it is more of like a white bread, but they kind of color it a little bit. And then with that cinnamon, that also kind of helps with the color too. Um, you know, I feel like if you have cinnamon raisin bread, it's probably better to make it on your own if you want. Um, I've even made like a, well, it's more of like a zucchini bread, but like you add the raisins into it and, you know, you still get that same kind of taste, but you know what's going into it. Um, that kind of answer your question. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. You guys are making me hungry now. <laughs> um, but some other whole grain examples or other times where you can incorporate them in a little more. Breakfast is huge for whole grains. Um, mm -hmm. You could get like a whole wheat, um, uh, what do you call it? A whole wheat um, waffles. Yeah. Pancake mix. Pancake mix. Um, you can make your own batter at home and put whole wheat flour in there. Um, bagels too. A lot of companies are now making whole wheat bagels, which yeah. is nice. Um, sometimes it's whole wheat cinnamon raisin bagel. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Um, and toast as well. Your cereals also. Um, I mean, I personally am a huge cereal fan. You want to be careful with those labels because I know like I think you'll see it more on like those kids cereals now where it's like Lucky Charms made with whole grains. So a lot of parents <laughs> think like, oh, there's whole grains in it. It must be good. But it's, it's also not the Also 20 grams ingredient. of sugar. <laughs> 20 grams of sugar. You got all the little marshmallows in there and the fun colors. Um, you know, but if you can stick to cereals that are just whole grains, like Cheerios, I always feel like are a good option okay. or any kind of like... Um, just like a, a whole grain cereal where you look at the label and it says whole grain oats or whatever the um so the oatmeal is. would be in that group 
Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. But how about like cream of wheat? Which I have a question for. Say, I think, I'm trying to think. I think that's pretty, because that's pretty white. I would say, and I forget what it is in there. I want to say, the, is it a wheat germ? That's the cereal? Um, oh, here you go. Yeah, so it looks like it's whole, ground whole wheat to make a smooth texture. So it sounds like it's still the whole oh. wheat. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like, yeah, it's like a ground whole wheat, like a wheat germ product. The cream, though, is it like an additive? No, so cream, no. I think it just means that it's processed it's down. Processed. That's why it's so high. Um, so some of them, it's going to be product to product. So I see some say like enriched farina. So mm -hmm. that one means it was processed okay. and then they added some of those B vitamins back. Um, so I think there's different options for cream of wheat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. wheatina so would be. Yeah, yeah. So you want to, another thing with whole grains is, if you want to go to the next slide, um, that fiber level. So if you're looking at the cream of wheat and it says like on the back of the packet, yeah. anything five grams or up for a serving means it has a whole grain in it. Um, so five grams is really good. So any kind of crackers or breads or pastas, if it says whole grain, if that first nutrient also says, so this one says stone ground whole wheat flour, so that first ingredient is a whole grain and that fiber is five grams, that means you're good. It's, it's a really good source of fiber and it has enough fiber to really help you digest those sugars and starches um, inside the bread or whatever you're looking at. So as long as there's also that high level of fiber. So one slice is nine grams of sugar. Is that what that says? Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you, yeah. let's see if I remember this correctly from yeah. college. I probably don't. You probably changed one gram of sugar equals four teaspoons of sugar. I believe that's still the same. Is it one? Four grams is one teaspoon. Four grams of sugar. Four grams of sugar is, is one, one teaspoon. teaspoon. <laughs> yes. yes. Yep. And so you can also see on the ingredient list here. So one, two, three. The fourth ingredient is honey. The fifth ingredient is corn syrup. So if you're looking out for those sugars, you may yeah. find a better option that has no honey and no corn syrup. So that's another thing. So if you're not just looking at the whole grains, you also want to watch that sugar level. Mm -hmm. Because even though there is high di uh, dietary fiber that could help you digest that sugar, if you're really wanting to cut out those extra added sugars, mm -hmm. you could probably find, you can compare the two and kind of find something a little lower in that sugar category. But this is an outdated label. So um, on the new label, it has the category for added sugars. So you don't have to search through the ingredient list to find oh. out. So it makes it much easier to compare products. Yeah. But now, would honey be okay? Because honey, okay. I mean, but like, like the thing with things like honey and maple syrup, yeah. like, yeah, like you do get it from like, you know, a natural product, yeah. you get it from the bees, and right. that's great. But I think it's about like, how it still reacts in your body. Like honey is sugar, maple syrup, sugar. Your body's still gonna use it as sugar. Oh. So it's still gonna cause your blood sugar levels to spike. Um, it's still going to kind of give you that same sugar um, use in your body. So you just want to be careful with those. Okay. Like, like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a huge honey fan just like anyone else, but, you know, if you can't, it... So you're not doing yourself any benefit by putting I mean, honey like, in your tea instead of a well, of sugar. No, so honey, well, honey is... Um, it's sweeter than table sugar, so you yeah, tend to use less. less. Yeah. And honey doesn't rise, uh, raise your blood sugar as high. So it is a little easier on the glycemic index. So that's what the, yeah. when you're measuring diabetes or how much something spikes your blood sugar. Honey definitely doesn't raise your blood sugar as high as table sugar. So it's always a good alternative. Mm -hmm. But like Meredith says, it's still, even though it's from a natural source, it's counted as an added sugar. Mm -hmm. So it is just okay. those empty calories from sugar. Um, but also you're digesting it with all the, the whole wheat. So if you're looking at a white bread, you're going to see a lot more grams of sugar inside the white bread just to add a lot of flavor. 
is it true if you get the honey from a local apiary, you get probiotics? Or you get the honey oh. that's on the shelf in the supermarket from who knows where? Yeah. Oh. Um, you don't get the probiotics? So you, you still get the probiotics, but it's more to your local environment. So if you're getting something local, those bees come from your environment. So they're pollinating and working with the flowers that you're naturally accustomed to in the environment. So it helps build an immunity to the direct kind of community you're in. So if you get something local, it's gonna have more of that pollen is gonna have more of your environment you're living in, where if you get something from either overseas or from across the country, it's yeah. still gonna have some good probiotics in it. It's just not going to be kind of directly tailored to the environment that you're in. So that is a, a great question. I never thought about that. Yeah. Huh. yeah. So, we, so we, I think Matt, um, forget, some organization in Massachusetts donated a ton of honey to us a long time ago, and it was all local. So it was just amazing. So that's how I learned it, because they, they were telling us that like, that's local, so then the bees use the environment around you, and it's tailored to kind of the allergens that you're exposed to. Oh, wow. Where if you're in California, you're not going to have the same allergens that we do in Massachusetts. Right. So wow. does the allergens in the honey, because it's local, help? Yeah. You know, so oh. it helps us build immunity to the allergens in the air, to oh, pollen, okay. to different things. So it kind of helps our immune system um, subtly yeah. with those probiotics and different allergens you're exposed to. It costs a lot more to buy that honey, but it tastes different too. Mm. It's, you don't use as much of it yeah. as you would use in the commercial, I think. Yeah. If you get like more flavor. Well, I feel like I've noticed like local versus like the store bought. Mm -hmm. The local seems a lot thicker to me. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it, like it's a different kind of honey or yeah. something. But yeah, and it never goes bad. Yeah, honey is like the one thing that never goes bad. Yeah, yeah. you don't have to refrigerate. I don't refrigerate nope. it. No, nope. yeah. you can stay at room temperature. Sometimes it crystallizes. So you just give it like a little water bath and kind of get it back to liquid. But it never goes bad. I was buying some honey locally last week and they said that when you get honey that it's one of the products that they um, add like the different places add water to or different things so it's really not just all honey honey mm -hmm. so if you get maybe that's why it seems thicker oh, and then if you get the yes. spring honey it's very light you know the, because the flowers are different than the late season honey totally uh -huh. yeah, totally it good. really tastes different it's very interesting yeah wow. Yeah. yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, it's, it's really true. interesting science. Yeah. How we ever came about to use money. <laughs> but it's, yeah, so it's, it's really interesting to like look more into it and to be able to see. Because I think you're right. Like if it's something more processed and not as local, they do have some additives that they put in there. Mm. Um, so another thing to, if we didn't tell you enough to read the labels, <laughs> that's going to be the motto. Do some investigation. Yeah. Um, but yeah. These are awesome, awesome questions. This is really interesting. We're on a roll. I love this. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I think we're going to highlight holy flower. Holy flower. And look at all those pretty colors. Mm. Um, so again, you know, going back to the holidays that are here. Um, I know my plate this Thanksgiving did not look as, as colorful as this, so I'll be honest. Um, but again, it kind of goes to show you that you can add vegetables and things into pretty much anything. Um, my favorite thing to do is even just do like these acorn squashes. You can add your quinoa into it too. Um, add some like sauteed vegetables in there and mix it up. Add your own spices and herbs. Um, but that's always a fun little side dish to make if you want to experiment. Yeah, and kind of like how the my plate is, you can look down and, and make it a little easier for you for food groups and portion sizes. Mm -hmm. With the colors, if you see a colorful variety plate, that means you're getting a, a lot of nutrients. Each of the colors is a different nutrient. Um, so it's really important to see that color, see the variety, and that means that you're making sure that those are in your diet. Eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. Exactly. exactly. And not Skittles. <laughs> <laughs> Literally eat the rainbow. Yeah. Oh, I love that. What about um, that purple cabbage and that purple cauliflower? So those have, oh. yeah, so those have little different, so those darker, mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. anthocyanins, I wish I had those. I so, think, yeah. So that purple color is like a precursor, which vitamin is that? How much it might tolerate. Maybe vitamin K, I don't know. So all those colors are just precursors, like orange vegetables, that's your vitamin A. That's that beta oh. carotene, you're, you eat the carrot, 
It turns that beta carotene into vitamin A, huh. really helps your vision, your skin, your immune system. Um, white fruits and vegetables, that's mainly filled with a lot of fiber. What else do we have? Red is loop um lycopene. Lycopene. Yeah, lycopene. So it's really good for your heart. So that red color is lycopene. It really helps prevent heart disease and lower your blood pressure and kind of reduce some inflammation in your body. So each of those colors really does something separate for our immune system and for our entire body. Um, so that's another way to make sure that you're getting the nutrients without having to think too hard, is just to look down and be like, okay, I'm switching up my colors today, I'm having some variety, and that's kind of what matters, is just having that variety. Exactly. Um, you know, and I feel like, it just like from past experiences, a lot of people are kind of hesitant to go towards the colorful things. They want their white mashed potatoes. They want, <laughs> you know, just like plain colored things but I'm a huge, um, you know, advocate for if you can, sneak in some extra vegetables into those mashed potatoes. Maybe add sweet potatoes instead, or butternut squash or carrots and blend it up in there. Um, turn things green and blend it with some spinach or whatever you gotta do. Um, <laughs> it's all about those little tricks. <laughs> scallions. <coughs> scallions and everything. Oh. That's what I put yeah. in my mashed potatoes last night. I was like, let me do some scallions. Yeah, I'm getting fancy. Oh, look at you. <laughs> That's a nice yeah. little bit of color, too. I always add scallions to everything. You can sneak a lot of vegetables into spaghetti sauce. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. That was, like, probably my number one tip for parents at my old job was, like, hey, your kids like spaghetti? Let's add some extra veggies into that spaghetti sauce, mm -hmm. and they won't even know it. And there you go. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Oh, Adapt to a lot. Um... And so just to kind of summarize, ideally each week you want to make sure that you're having your balanced plate, you're eating your rainbows, um, try to increase your whole grains, dairy, try to stick to the low fat dairy options, um, proteins, proteins are great, try to stick to the ones that are leaner, like chicken, turkey, fish, things like that. If you're having red meat, maybe have it like once or twice a week. Try to limit that. Um, drink plenty of water. That's really important. So we haven't mentioned water at all. <laughs> there we have it. And I feel like that should be on the my plate too. Have like a little extra cup sticking out of it. But we'll give them some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> water is definitely important. <laughs> um, and the meats, where does pork fall into that? Question. Pork, I think that's technically like a red meat when they classify it because it's so fatty. I'm pretty sure it kind of falls under the red meat category. Depends, depends on the cut. So if you're getting oh, something mm. something on the leaner side uh -huh. without the fat cap, mm. then that's going to be a lot healthier. Where they're thinking about like bacon or a lot of ground pork where you get like the 80%, 20% fat. Yeah. So it's, it's just about that balance mm. where if you get something leaner like, like red meat or if you're getting ground beef, getting like 93%, 7% fat. Um, mm cooking off that extra fat so then then it becomes a lean protein because then it's just the, the protein it's not because we're worried about that saturated fat level mm. so that's that piece of fat so at room temperature if you see that white cap of fat yeah. that's saturated yeah. fat yeah. so it's solid at room temperature yeah. so we're just trying to eliminate some of that extra because that's the one that leads to um higher bad cholesterol levels and you know all that fun heart stuff so so awesome. what does that mean by saturated so saturated fat Oh, those are the ones that are solid at room temperature. So like butter, the fat on your meat, um, lard, Crisco. Think, Crisco. Crisco. Yeah. Yep. Those are all saturated fats as opposed to unsaturated fats, which are liquid at room temperature. So that's like your, your olive oil, canola oil, mm -hmm. things like that. The unsaturated ones are the ones that are healthier for your heart. Um, Whereas the saturated, the solid ones, those ones are the ones you want to watch out for. It's really like a chemistry term. The saturated and unsaturated, it's about like the chemical bonds inside the fats, so it just gets a little too techy. <laughs> a little bit too <laughs> into the science when we start breaking down, but that's really just the difference is that liquid at room temperature is those healthier fats, and then solid at room temperature is going to be the ones that we want to kind of limit. Not completely eliminate we still need some saturated fat in our diet yeah but it's just a lot more prevalent in the american diet so we can kind of mm. well, calm ourselves down on on the on the saturated fat oh yeah what, what could you use as a substitute for butter 
kind of depends on the food. Like if you're baking or if you're or if you're trying to put like butter on your mashed potatoes or something. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I feel like it kind of depends on personal taste. I think a lot of people try to replace butter with oils, but if you're doing like mashed potatoes, I would say stick to seasonings. Try not to do like uh, maybe do like a little bit of butter, but then do more like you know parsley or you know whatever kind of herbs you want to put on there. Just that way you're getting those nice flavors, but you're not dousing the thing in butter. <laughs> yeah, that's the tough thing with butter. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're like cooking something, yeah, you can switch it with an olive oil or a vegetable oil with a little higher cooking temp. Um, baking, we say you can swap out, add some applesauce instead. It still helps. It makes a little cakeier texture, but it but it still covers some of that butter, what it does inside the, the recipe. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like that mashed potatoes, yeah, <laughs> it comes down to kind of reducing and, and kind of adjusting your taste. Or holiday cookies, you can't swap mm. butter for margarine in a holiday cookie. Yeah, it just a lot of people do it, but then how, mm. how many of those holiday cookies do you eat? I mean, you share That's the thing. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, maybe you love the, the butter and the mashed potatoes. That's perfectly fine. Go full fat on that and then just make sure you're watching your serving sizes and then, because you're not going to eat the entire thing of of mashed potatoes. I mean, maybe you do. I mean, you might, but <laughs> yeah. maybe it'll take you a few days. So it's just about kind of balancing that and working within your diet. Or maybe I had a lot of butter this morning on my toast. Maybe I shouldn't have a burger for lunch with that saturated fat. So just balancing it. You notice a lot of the Asian foods are the stir fries. They ask to prepare, start preparing them with um, peanut oil. What do you think? Would you do that, or would you just use canola oil? So it's, it's, I think it's, it's about both. The, it the, doesn't. The high temp. Mm -hmm. So it's just about the way the oil. So like, if you were using olive oil, it would burn. Yeah. When you're going to that stir fry temp, where peanut oil is really good at high temperature, so it fries things really oh. well. Oh. without having that kind of rancid overcooked flavor from the oil um but a lot of the vegetable canola is really good at high temp too um so that's kind of easier if you, especially if you come with a peanut allergy mm. switching over to that canola oil is usually they're pretty consistent i believe at the cooking temp mm -hmm. yeah yeah well that's it yeah so it's just about because i know like a lot of fast food restaurants they always use peanut oil and so like the peanut allergies so a lot of them use um, was it like corn oil or something? I think it's corn oil or soy oh, yeah, with um, some beef flavorings to still make it taste like it's fried and beef fat. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah. I know um, when I'm cooking at home, I always try to use olive oil, but at the same time, I've noticed if I'm stir frying something, the smoke detector is going to go off because it does start to smoke pretty quickly. Yeah. And like, and there's different kinds of olive oil, and I'm not too sure like sometimes it'll say right on the bottle oh this one's okay for stir frying or mm -hmm. you know this one it's really just good for dressings and marinades yeah. and not really cooking so um kind of depends on what you're trying to make um good questions any other questions with that mm -hmm. all right um so the labels as we were just talking about. This is the new and improved nutrition facts label. Um, it's not always color coded. This is just for our purposes today. Um, I wish it was. I wish yeah. it was. I say it's so pretty. I like it. Um, but one thing that you'll notice, um, some of the changes that they've made, so you always want to start at the top where it says the serving size. Oh, thank you. They compare the two, so it makes it a little easier to see. Oh, yeah. Here, you know what? We're going to pass this around. On the left side is the old label, on the right side is the new one, so you can kind of see the changes. Um, but when you're looking at the label, the first thing mm -hmm. you're going to notice is the serving size and the servings per container. Now, if you're like me, <laughs> um, sometimes depending on the product, you could easily eat that whole thing in one sitting. Ice cream? Exactly. Yeah. A little exactly. tiny of ice cream. <laughs> oh man, yeah. it is like this big, but yeah. it, in one of those, that's actually really like four servings. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, they just they just delabeled and now have three. Yeah, yeah have three. So I was like, oh. I was like, thanks. They went from four to three. So I was like, okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> right. I know it's like be more realistic here. Yeah. We're getting um, closer. But so with that in mind, though, that whole little kind of ice cream, if it has three servings, mm -hmm. these numbers here are only for one serving. So if you eat that whole pint of ice cream, you've got to multiply these by three. So instead of 110 calories, it's actually 330 calories in that whole pint of ice cream. So it adds up real quick. Um, I know, <laughs> you're telling me. And there's, and there's another example. So this is for a box of mac and cheese. So inside it says three cups. So there's three servings, one cup for one serving. So it kind of lists the calories, the fat for everything. So that's for one cup. So if you look down, you ate the whole box, you have to multiply it by three. So it's really 1,230 calories, and then all of the fat and everything else is multiplied down here. So it's just important to know that based on the serving, you multiply the nutrients on the label. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, here, I'll give you a big doozy side here with all of And also we mentioned on the new label, now they've included added sugars. So it makes it way easier for us to be able to differentiate natural versus added. So we had talked about natural sugar. So there's two types of natural sugar. There's fructose in fruit and lactose in milk. Oh so those God. are just our two oh natural God. sugars. But then the things that are under the added sugars, that's generally your table sugar. Your white sugar that you're adding into your cookies, that's added in. That's not so that didn't show on the, the old one? No, no. So it was just... Oh. Right. So that's one of the big oh. changes because some of those products, like let's say you're having like... Um, Chobani yogurt. Chobani yogurt. Great yeah. example. I like that. Right? And especially the flavored ones, like the, let's say, blueberry yogurt, <laughs> right? Um, it'll show you. It's probably going to say like total sugars, maybe it's like 15 grams or something like that. Yeah. But the added sugars, it could be like eight grams of added sugar. I don't know if it's actually that much, but that added sugar is most likely that blueberry flavor that they put in. Yeah. The total sugars includes the added blueberries plus the natural sugar that's already in yogurt, which is the lactose. Um, so total sugar, okay. 15 grams but like if more than half of that is added that that's, that's a lot of sugar you can that. probably find a better product oh, yeah that has less added sugar so that drives me crazy that huh. Chobani yogurt that little thing of yogurt okay. a lot of them have 16 grams of sugar yeah so that's four teaspoons of sugar mm -hmm. in that little cup of yogurt there is some natural sugar. So milk has lactose, which is a natural sugar. So we don't count that towards our daily amount of sugar because it has that vitamin D, the calcium from the milk. So you're not just, when you're drinking or eating milk or yogurt, you're not just getting empty calories, like we said with honey or with table sugar. So it's kind of a total package with natural sugar. So let's say you have that um, yogurt and it's 16 grams of sugar, and then underneath it says added six grams. So that means 10 of it was natural, so that came oh, from, okay. from the yogurt, so that's okay. fine. But those six grams probably has a little extra honey or maybe some added sugar oh. to it. So you can probably compare and find either like a different Chobani or a different brand that doesn't have that extra added sugar. Okay. Because that's where, with the total package with milk, it has enough natural sugar where we can digest it easily with the fat and the vitamins. Mm. That added sugar the milk isn't prepared to help us digest that. So it's going to increase our blood sugar level. Exactly. Well, that's good that they added that then because... Yeah, and yeah. there's so many different names for sugar, like corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, table sugar, anything ending, ending in OSE, so dextrose, mm -hmm. maltose. maltose. There's so Sucrose. many scientific names for sugar that they'll put on the label, and you're like, how does this add up? How am I supposed to know how many added grams of sugar? What is natural? So they finally were like, okay, we're going to give you a little cheat sheet. We're going to put it on the label so you don't have to do all this research to find out what's added. Exactly. So we are very grateful for that. Yeah. 
And one thing, if you have time in the grocery store next time, I dare you to look at the yogurt and look at the different brands of vanilla yogurts. Okay. I I was shocked to see that some of them are reasonable and it's maybe like, you know, five or six grams of added sugar, not too bad. But then you have some brands, it's like candy. But it's all vanilla yogurts. Ugh. Some of them are a lot sweeter than others. So that's a, oh, a fun okay. little activity if you want. Yeah. <laughs> so then plain yogurt doesn't have the added sugar. Right? Nope. That's right. Okay. Exactly. So if you can, try to stick to the plain yogurt and then add your own toppings. Add your own fresh berries, maybe a little bit of honey if you want, some granola, you know. Um, and that's definitely going to help to cut down on the sugar too. Because you're going to end up adding way less than what they do to manufacture it because that sugar is also preservative. So okay. they add extra sugar to also keep that yogurt fresh on the shelf for longer. Where you're just getting plain yogurt, adding your own little sugar to it, it's automatically going to be way less than what they would add. Exactly. They're tricky, these food makers. Oh, they figured it out. They figured it out for sure. Um, yeah. So I think if you click the button, it'll be serving size, calories you talked about. Perfect. That there yellow stoplight section. Oh, yeah. So going back to those fats, though, we were talking about the saturated fat. That's the solid at room temperature. The unsaturated, that's the liquid. They don't always list the unsaturated fats like this one doesn't have unsaturated um but they're supposed to list trans fat that's yeah, that supposed to be bad yes exactly do you know why no so what trans fat is is that's essentially fat that's been modified it's been changed um where before it was a liquid fat at room temperature and then they added hydrogen to it they hydrogenated it and they turned it into a solid fat at room temperature. Hmm. So you'll see things like, I think the best example is in peanut butters. Hmm. If you see it says hy hydrogenated oil, hydrogenated palm oil, hmm. um, if it says hydrogenated, that means it's a trans fat. It, that fat has been manipulated and processed make it more solid. So they have to put that on, they put that on the labels already. They do. It'll be like in the ingredients down here yeah. and then you'll see in the trans fat. Okay. There's a little caveat with that yeah. one though because trans fat they don't have to put it on the label if it's less than 0.5 grams per serving mm -hmm. and like we said the companies love to play around with the serving sizes so yeah. they can adjust the serving size to make sure the trans fat is less than 0.5 then they can put zero on the ingredient uh, on the nutrition oh, label. Right. So it's really important to check for those oils. Like she said, a lot of the when you walk into a convenience store, those like baked goods, the donuts on yeah. the bottom. Anything with icing on it. The icing usually because it's a really cheap um, source of fat, to kind of for baked goods. Mm. Um, so yeah, with the peanut butter, it's a really cheap additive. Yeah. So just looking on that label, so anything that says hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated, okay. um, that means there are trans fats. Mm. Okay. So especially with peanut butter, where the serving size is so small, like one yeah. tablespoon, two tablespoon, you're not going to have more than 0.5 grams of trans fat in a tablespoon. So that's why they really get away with it for different peanut butter brands. Right. And then if you're like me, you're probably doing more like three or four tablespoons right. at once. Right. So you could be having like maybe even two or three grams of trans fat in there alone if you're going yeah. above that serving size. Um, one thing that you can kind of keep an eye out for though is if you're getting peanut butters usually if it's one that you have to stir it like it separates the oil and the peanut butter mm -hmm. and you stir it that's okay because that one doesn't have the hydrogenated oils in it the hydrogenated oils are in the peanut butter to help it stay creamy so you don't have to stir it so although it's kind of odd and sometimes inconvenient to stir it up it's usually a healthier option for you oh. yeah it's um, a really good way to put it yeah it's uh it's definitely like i'm a huge peanut butter fanatic and that's something that i think i've kind of learned over the years that um depending on your brands some of them i know there's there's a few that they've kind of mastered where it doesn't have the hydrogenated oils in it mm -hmm. and it's still creamy i'm not quite sure how they do it but it, 
kind of look at some other thing. yeah some other some preservative other inside of it yeah so it's not an automatic giveaway that has trans fat yeah you still want to mm-hmm. check the ingredients but yeah okay um we already talked about fiber if you can a good source of fiber or an item that's considered a good source of fiber usually has between you know two and a half to five grams of fiber um a little more is probably better that means it's really high in fiber if it's more than five grams but if it's less than that two and a half maybe it's one or maybe it's zero try to opt for something that has a little bit more fiber in it um like the breads you mean yeah oh yeah the breads um cereals things like that you definitely want to look at the fiber content Mm. um it also you're always going to find at the bottom here the list of few key nutrients um you know it's not really a huge deal sorry oh yeah go ahead they see they changed from the last one so they updated the nutrients so it's based on a survey of the american population and kind of what we're missing in our diets so that we can focus on it in the products we buy so the last one was vitamin a vitamin c mm-hmm. calcium and iron so we kept the calcium and iron and now especially us in the northeast vitamin d is super important from the foods we eat oh. during the winter so now vitamin d is listed and also potassium mm-hmm. oh. so those are the nutrients now that they say are more important for our diet that we're kind of lacking so they highlighted it now on the label okay. and they took off the c and the a yep the c and the a yep so they're saying yep they're getting enough vitamin c enough vitamin a now we're focusing more on that vitamin d and potassium where would you get potassium from naturally they always say for cramps bananas you get a lot of um, potassium and bananas a lot of the white fruits and vegetables so a lot of cauliflower also i think bell peppers are one of the highest ones that have potassium really oh yeah, yeah. especially with vitamin c and potassium so a lot mm-hmm. of times we'll say like oh orange juice you got a vitamin c yeah. bell peppers usually have twice the amount of vitamin c as orange juice it's so just we don't red eat red it as much um i think i don't know if it's does it depend on the color? Yeah, so I, 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 it's more concentrated in the green and orange. The red has more of the, um, is it more potassium? I can't remember. But it's pretty minimal differences okay. throughout the changes. So mm-hmm. you're not going to see too much of a difference in vitamin level. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. Also, too, you'll find, um, going back to like cereals, a lot of the cereals that are out today they're they've been fortified with mm-hmm. other nutrients as well and usually on the label you'll see a whole list of like vitamin a b b12 blah 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 and it gives you the whole shebang and because it's fortified it tends to be a really good source of those vitamins a lot of them have like 25 percent of your daily value for like vitamin b12 or you know mm-hmm. whatever so it's kind of interesting to look at those labels in the store too some of them that are fortified have like all those vitamins but then there are also cereals out there that are not fortified which is fine but they don't have all of that extra vitamin and mineral content in there um so it kind of depends on what you're looking for and is it true that b12 is an egg yolks yes so b12 yeah. is only an animal products so oh, if you're someone that's yeah, a vegan yeah. or a vegetarian you're going to need to take a B12 supplement. Mm. Yeah, so it's all an animal. Yeah, so eggs, beef, dairy. That's yeah. where your B12 comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here we go. Um, so our percent daily value. Percent daily value. You've seen these percentages on the side, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the ones that are here in yellow you want to try to keep those percents pretty low. For example, so that's your sodium, your salt intake. You want to try to keep that on the low side. This item in particular has a lot of saturated fat, it looks like. Um, You know, I think with sodium, you want to try to keep it, I mean, as low as you can, but what is it, like 20%? Yeah, so like you said, where four grams of sugar is one teaspoon, we usually say like, We want to get between, so for women, 24 to 26 grams, about four to six teaspoons. Um, And then for men, it's a little higher. Um, But for sodium, the maximum daily amount you want is 2,100 milligrams. That's in one teaspoon of sodium. 
there's not as much leeway than with sugar. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. really. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of the sodium that we get in our diet is through the processed foods that we eat. So through oh. canned goods or different things that we buy at the grocery store, it's not a lot of the sodium that we add to the food. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah. So again, if you can when you're cooking, try not to add the salt to the food, but try to just season it with herbs and spices instead. Um, and then these ones that are highlighted in green, these are the ones where you really want that percentage to be on the higher side. Um, so like this product in particular has two grams of fiber. All right, so we could probably use a little more. Um, and then these vitamin and uh, minerals down here, again, if they could be a little higher, that'd be great too. Uh, any questions? We're getting towards the end of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we do talk a lot. <laughs> no. So is there anything specific that you guys are interested in or if you looked at the packet, if you had any certain questions, there's definitely some recipes, some food safety tips. Um, yeah, kind of a wrap up thing, just being realistic, especially during the holiday season, we don't say it's a weight loss time. <laughs> we can just focus on weight maintenance, maintenance. <laughs> balance. Spending time with family and friends and just enjoying the holiday season. It's not a time to be hypercritical about diet and, you exactly. know, cutting so, foods out. Right. It's not the time. Don't be afraid to have that slice of pie. Enjoy it, but try to keep it to, you know, a small slice of pie. Um, and then going back to that sugar, oh my god, I love these pictures. They look so good, but oh my gosh, that's a lot of sugar. Um, you know, so be careful with that. We already talked about salt. Oh man, and I love these pictures too. Um, uh, yeah, so canned gravy is another culprit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make your own gravy if you can. Uh, salt, sugar, we yeah, can so moderation. <laughs> um, one thing we always recommend too, if you can, after you have your big meal with your family, maybe go out for a walk or something. Just try to, try to unless it's like for today. Day. Yeah, unless it's like today or it's like indoor activities. Um, definitely stay hydrated. Drink lots of water. Um, and again, if you're going to your holiday parties and if you're bringing a dish, maybe be that one that brings the veggie plate because you know that no one else in the family will. <laughs> try to be that that voice of reason there. Um, you know, there's so many different appetizers that you can bring that don't have to be like, you know, pigs in a blanket or whatever. You can do a whole bunch of other things. Um, serving sizes, portion sizes. Um, a lot of times, depending on the food, but you can even just look at your own hand for just getting a general idea of how much mm -hmm. of that item you should have. Um, like we said with the meat, a serving of meat is about the size of a deck of cards. Um, a serving of beans is about like the size of your, your palm. Um, the peanut butter, the margarine, things like that is about the size of your thumb. Um, let me see, the greens, the pasta, half a cup of pasta is a serving. And again, or uncooked? Um, I believe it's cooked. Uh, <laughs> is it cooked or uncooked? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, that is a good question. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to think of what it would be. Yeah, it's got to be cooked. Yeah. How can you eat it uncooked? Well, right. But, but, but the and then you half a cup, yeah. half a cup of uncooked. Once you cooked it, would be more. Be a little. But it's still be half a cup. <laughs> true. Right? True. That is a good question. Um, yeah. On the protein. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have how many servings of protein a day? Oh, this is saying so two to three servings per day. So if you have two size. eggs for breakfast, that's kind of it. So two small eggs or one large egg is typically a serving, but okay, it's it varies oh, okay. for your own. Per protein is very personal to your own diet. Yeah, um, we will say. In the United States, no one really lacks protein in their diet. We tend to overeat protein. Um, so it's really just about the source of protein. It helps you feel fuller for longer. So it's not a bad thing to get more protein in your diet. Um, so, yeah, again, it's just about the source of protein, where eggs, not a bad thing. Okay. So if you have two eggs for breakfast, 
that's a really good source of protein to start your day. I wouldn't worry about trying to eat less protein throughout your day. Right. Yeah. Right. And these are just like on average recommendations, but at the same time, it depends on you yourself as yeah. a person. Um, if you're trying to build muscle or if you're trying to maintain muscle or if you're a very physically active person, you're going to need more protein in your diet to keep your muscles moving. So again, it's, it's very personal to like your, your physical level and um, just kind of the different types of protein that you eat. Um, and as you can see up here from fruits and veggies, you can't go wrong with those. <laughs> they say seven to ten servings a day. Well, yeah, right? I know. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, you know, that, that might be a lot for most people, but, you know, you can't go wrong with those. Mm -hmm. um, the dairy and the protein, those are both about two to three a day. Fats and oils, again, two to three a day. Try to keep it to, like, those healthier fats. Grains, five to seven servings a day. Quite a few. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Get a little bit more pasta in there. Maybe do like two fists instead of just one. <laughs> That's where the flexibility comes in. Yeah. Well, I was curious because I Joseph could eat pasta, so oh. how he came home every day. So I'm wondering you know, if he really likes it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure no one, no one sticks the pasta portion sizes oh, in this yeah. country. So. Yeah, especially if you're going to a restaurant being served pasta, they're giving you at least three to four cups of pasta on your plate. So, oh, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not a bad thing to eat more than one serving size in a sitting. It's just you have to just be aware of it and kind of plan your day accordingly. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to have two cups of pasta. If it fills you up and it's something you enjoy, there's no problem. But is pasta like a, a carb, carb so that it turns to sugar? Yeah. Yeah, so it's about the type of pasta too, like you can see there's a lot of protein pastas, they add some protein in, or whole grain pasta, so you'll be getting some of that fiber, where kind of the generic pastas you see a lot are a lot of just white flour, yeah. so that's when you get a lot of that sugar okay. rush. Yeah. Um, any, any other questions with those? Um, you know, in talking about mindful eating, again, I feel like that's kind of like a very popular term a lot of people use nowadays, but really all mindful eating is, is really just taking time to enjoy your food. I know a lot of times that food is so good, you can shovel it in and then before you know it, you're like, oh, now I'm too full. But if you try to eat more mindfully, eat slower, really enjoy each bite of food. Um, try to, you know, get all those flavors and really just you know, appreciate it. Um, also, I don't know if you guys know this, but I didn't know this for a long time. Um, but the hunger signals in your brain, mm -hmm. they don't know that you're full until about 10 to 20 minutes after you've had your meal. So a lot of times people will go for seconds. It's like, oh, finish this plate of food. I'm going right back up. If you can, try to wait 10 minutes before going back up for seconds. And that way you can kind of give your brain and your body some time to realize like, okay, are we really hungry still? Or are we just uh, overindulging a little bit? Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully that can kind of help you to keep from getting too full. Um, and kind of like what we already talked about here too, there's some healthy little swaps you can do when you're making mm -hmm. foods. We talked about the applesauce, replacing butter and those baked goods. Um, oil, um, yogurt instead of like sour cream or mayonnaise like we did with the coleslaw today. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can try. One thing I also recommend too is if you're using a broth for anything, yeah. try to get those lower sodium ones. You may not have that same flavor, but again, if you add more herbs to it, you can really help to make up for that lesser amount of sodium. Um, like a lot of like those canned ones or the ones that come in the um, the bottles at the store, mm -hmm. look at those labels because guaranteed if you look at the sodium, you might be a little shocked to see how much is in there. Um, but again, that's why it tastes so good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, these are just kind of like some little tips we always tell people to try. Um, trying to sneak in more whole grains and 
fruits and vegetables if you can. Slow down your eating, try to enjoy your foods, and yeah, enjoy all those holiday foods, and just, uh, you know, try to keep it to a more moderate amount. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the eggnog. You know when you buy the eggnog, like put the eggnog in its little container ready to go? Golden eggnog. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so if you make your own eggnog, you know, like with the real eggs and stuff, yeah. is that better for you? Or is that probably still just as bad? Definitely anything made at home is going to have less ingredients, less preservatives, yeah. and less sugar than mm -hmm. what you would make. Okay. So it's definitely a better option. I mean, eggnog in general is just, high calorie and indulgent anyway yeah. so I mean if you enjoy eggnog you're gonna enjoy eggnog <laughs> so yes yeah yeah the world yes it will probably be better um and that's all that matters yeah. <laughs> it's the holidays we're not having eggnog every single day so. exactly yeah that's a good question though yeah so any other questions mm -hmm. we're wrapped up with our Christmas list yeah thank you yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank it was a great you. discussion, great questions. Awesome questions. You guys really got us thinking. I know. Now I have like more recipes to <laughs> <laughs> go with.